So now when the GPU stock is improving or has improved since a little while ago, now the big question for creators is which is the right GPU and there might be a bit of confusion for especially the beginners when you're looking at the numbers, there's some letters after the GPU, like which one is different? For example, there's three 3080s on desktop and another 3080 for the laptop or mobile version as well. So it can be a little bit confusing thinking like which one is the better one and to make sure that you're not getting ripped off when buying one thinking oh I got a better deal where actually some of the marketing numbers actually are worse than what they actually are then making sure that you don't make those mistakes and don't get ripped off let's talk about GPUs and which ones are the right ones for creators before you double tap your right thumb let me tell you about the video sponsor B&H when you're looking for your next creator tools I highly recommend you check out B&H and their wide range of products whether it's photo audio video or PC Mac related products especially when you're looking for a GPU for your PC build and don't forget the deal zone where deals change daily and you might find some killer deals. B&H gives you the confidence of shopping with easy 30-day returns, award-winning customer service and competitive prices. Spread the cost of products with B&H Paybu card that offers special financing and special tax saving on selected products. Check out B&H and the latest deals in the description below. First of all why Team Green and not Team Red. The reason for that is that Team Green and video graphics cards are much better for creators when you are doing video editing or any rendering or 3D work or something like that, then Nvidia cards are much better for you. Basically the mid-range cards like a 3070 from Nvidia is as good as the top of the line of AMD. For example, the RX 6900 XT has much more restoration like GPU power in gaming, but the RTX 3070 will keep up with it in creative applications or productivity tasks. So that's why we're talking about a team in green. Second Secondly, what is the GPU hierarchy? Like which is the bottom one and which is the higher one? Now I know that there's a lot of very experienced PC builders and guys watching this channel but bear in mind there's a lot of new people as well and beginners who might think what the heck do all these numbers mean and it might be a little bit confusing because I remember being in that point and thinking like which one is better? So generally Nvidia graphics cards have four numbers. First two numbers mean the series, the 30 series, there's 20 series, then 10 series and then cause nine and so on down. Then after the second, like the third and the fourth number, represent the kind of line of GPU. The higher the number is, the better it is. For example, 3050 is worse than 3070, 3060, you know, 3080, 3090, and so on. But also there is a few letters that can be in the end of the number. One being super, if you're looking at the 20 series cards, there's something called super, like you can have a 2060 or 2060 super, as you can see this over here. And then another two letters that can be in the end of those numbers is a TI. Now super is a jump up from no letters and TI is a jump up from the super. For example there is 2080 super and 2080 TI. Now the lineup is the same on laptop side as well as on the desktop side. Bear in mind laptop GPUs aren't as powerful as the desktop variation of this because you can have a 3050 desktop size and 3050 laptop size then they are not the same kind of graphics power just because on the laptop you can't push as much power through so the power limitations are limited. But the general rule is that the mobile GPUs aren't so different from the desktop GPUs when comparing the lower end graphics cards. The higher we start ramping up like 3070, 3080 and so on then the difference is much different from desktop to mobile sites because the power limits are going to be much different from each other. But on the lower end, for example, 3050, the power limits aren't that different from each other. So then let's have a look at the lineup. Bear in mind, I'm going to give you the 30 series lineup over here. We have the 3050 on the very bottom, then 3060, then 3060 Ti. But the very interesting difference over here is if you look at the 3060, 3060 has more VRAM, 16 gigabytes, than 3060 Ti, 8 gigabytes. But the 3060 Ti is a much more powerful graphics card than the 3060 itself. So Nvidia has done some weird marketing over there, making you think that the 3060 is better than the 3060 Ti. 
But as you can see from the price, the 3060 Ti actually has much more graphics power to process your video, 3D, or so on. Then we have 3070, 3070 Ti. Moving on to we have 3080 with 10 gigabytes of VRAM. Then we have 3080 with 12 gigabytes of VRAM and there's extra little graphics power as well. Then we have 3080 Ti, then 3090, and then finally 3090 Ti. So whenever you're choosing a GPU and you don't know kind of which one is better than the other one, just adhere to this guideline over here. Next of all, what about the brands? You can get an RTX 3080 in lots of different brand variations. You can get it from MSI, Gigabyte, Zotac, Asus, what am I missing here? Um, Inno, PMY, and so on. The list goes on and on and on. Now, which graphics card is better like which you know brand should i go for honestly it doesn't matter they all perform the same for creators well you know not like exactly the same but you know within one percent of each other so you really don't actually have to worry about oh should i go with msi or asus rtx 3080 really look at the price tag Whichever one is the cheapest one, the same model, let's have a look at like 3070, whether it's from Asus, Zotac, Gigabyte or MSI, just get the cheapest one. You don't need to worry about the brand, which brand it comes from. One thing I do recommend doing is just whichever brand is the cheapest, let's type this online and see if there's an, any like weird quirks about this particular model of that graphics card. Just type in, I don't know, Zotac RTX 3070 review and then see if there's lots of like weird things come up or whatever. Because sometimes there is a particular like GPU model in certain brand that can be a lot weaker or have some issues than all the other brands. So just do a quick Google before purchasing the card. But also there is a lot of unknown brands, like the brands that I would kind of rely on and recommend and say, look, whichever one you really go from them, they're absolutely fine. They are MSI, Asus, Gigabyte, Zotac and EVGA. All the other ones are kind of like lying underneath them and they're not as popular and might not have the best software to configure some of the um, you know, hardware or whatever. But these are the most popular graphics card brands. Another thing you might see in the title of the graphics card model is three letter combination, LHR. What that means is low hash rate, which basically is a limitation from Nvidia through a driver that this card is not as good when trying to mine cryptocurrency with that card. But as a creator, you don't need to worry about that. The card will perform exactly the same in your video editing or 3D rendering as a non-LHR card. So you don't need to worry about that at all. Another thing you might want to consider is the GPU memory or the VRAM. Well, it's actually video memory. Different NVIDIA GPUs in the 30 series have different VRAMs. For example, the 3060 has 12 gigabytes and the 3060 Ti has eight gigabytes. So you might be thinking, is this 12 gigabytes better than the you know, eight gigabytes? And honestly, unless you do more than 6K or 8K video editing, you don't really need that much VRAM. Also comes useful when doing, you know, like 3D modeling and so on. But generally all the way up to 3080, which has 10 gigabytes, you don't really need more than eight gigabytes if you're just doing 4K video editing, for example, especially photographers, you don't need that much at all. Photographers, you should get the 3050 and be absolutely happy with it because that's all you'd really need. But if you're a video editor, for example, and your workflow includes 8K footage, maybe, maybe 6K plus footage, then having more than 10 gigabytes of VRAM is very, very useful for you because the high resolution of frames in your you know timeline actually eat up quite a lot of that VRAM. So having more is better for you. There is a little bit of a gain also when editing in DaVinci Resolve, but you don't really need more than eight gigabytes of VRAM when doing 4K video editing. It only becomes necessary with higher resolutions of video editing. Also, when you are doing some, um, you know, Blender, Maya or 3D modeling, rendering type of work, then the VRAM can be very useful as well. For example, the 1390s have 24 gigabytes and it's faster as well. But obviously within your budget, you have a look which card you can really afford but the biggest mistake you can do is thinking that, oh, I got a good deal and went with 3060 
even if you could afford 3060 Ti because of the VRAM difference there. Go with 3060 Ti if you're wanting the difference. Honestly, between those two cards for you, it doesn't make a difference. So hopefully these tips help you decide or know which GPU is better for you as a creator. Now I've got another video coming out about the GPU buying mistakes because there can be a few mistakes you can also make when buying the GPU, but stick around for that video because you do want to see that as well before purchasing a GPU. I'll leave a few GPUs in the description below. Thanks guys for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.